Ladies and gentlemen, the Raptors are back. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of Raps Report, a podcast where I talk about the Raptors and the NBA. I'm your host, Luca Rosano. Hope you're all doing well. What a win that was against the Philadelphia 76ers. The Raptors are grooving. The Raptors are one game above 500. they They've won four games in a row, and they look to be back. They got a renewed energy. They're playing well. Small ball is working, and uh, the Toronto Raptors continue to move in the right direction. We are going to get into today's show, but before we do just that, I do want to say... Special shout out to Rhythm360, who just joined as a channel member. Thank you so much for joining. And another shout out going out to David McKinnon. He too joins as an all star channel member. It's greatly appreciated. All my channel members, you guys are awesome. If you guys are able to, consider hitting that join button, become an all star or superstar channel member to receive custom perks and emojis for all my videos and live streams. You will get a shout out in this podcast. You'll be featured in the credits of this podcast. And if you become a superstar member, you'll get your name featured in the description box down below with a link beside your name promoting whatever it is that you want. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring post notifications. I'll be going live again tomorrow night as the Raptors look to sweep this mini two game set against the Sixers. So I mean, what a crazy turn of events, guys. The Raptors' first 10 games of the season, 2-8. and eight. Their last 21 games of the season, 14-7. and seven. This 21-game pace would put them at around 55 wins over the course of a full 82-game season. So many people might look at this and say, why did the Raptors start off so badly? And there's a couple of different reasons that I can pinpoint. I think the biggest reason was the fact that there was no NBA preseason And the other big reason was the fact that the Raptors had to readjust and relocate to a brand new place. Obviously, none of these games have been played in Toronto. The Raptors have essentially played their entire season on the road going to uh, Amalai Arena in uh, Tampa Bay, Florida. So those are two factors that really hurt the Raptors, and which is probably the reason why they got off to a little bit of a slow start. Another big reason, I believe, is the fact that Nick Nurse didn't really know what kind of rotations he was going to play. He didn't really know what was going to work. And obviously there was a glaring need at center. There still is. So not having a center made things a lot harder for Nick Nurse to figure out what was needed, uh, you know, for this to work. And then he finally makes the big adjustment. He goes small. He brings Baines from off the bench. Let's call it for what it is. Aaron Baines has turned his season around from coming off the bench. And now it looks like, Nick Nurse has figured out the formula for now of going small, playing small, and then when you need to bring in a big body to go up against a bigger team who has a Joel Embiid, he did that by bringing in Baines, and Baines did a good job. Joel Embiid had one of his worst shooting performances of the season. Not only has Nick Nurse finally figured out his rotations, you look at the development of some of these Raptors players who have taken their game to the next level. The first one being Norman Powell, who's scoring 20 points per game. And it was inevitable that he was eventually going to become a starter. And I think the Raptors were just using him wrong by bringing him off the bench. Norman Powell's a starter. He's proving it. And he has been playing so well over the last couple of months. You look at Siakam. He's upped his averages to 22 points per game, 7.2 rebounds per game, 5.3 assists per game, and over a block and a steal per game. And... He has looked so much better defensively. He has really leveled up defensively. And uh, he has been playing out of his mind in this month of February. So I guess all of the Siakam slander did end up working. Fred's been playing like an all-star. And then you look at OG Ananobi. When he's healthy, he's proven to be one of the best two-way players. He's a defensive nightmare. He's arguably, I would say, one of the top five pure defenders in the NBA right now. Then you look at Chris Boucher. He's been a pleasant surprise from off the bench. He had a huge game against the 76ers with his offense and his defense. And I know Jordan Clarkson looks to be the odds-on favorite to win the sixth man of the year. But do not count out Chris Boucher, who should be considered as a top candidate for that award. And then Bembry. You look at DeAndre Bembry, guys. He is one of the most underrated pickups of the offseason. He has been playing great. His defense has been there. His energy has been there. His hustle has been there. And in the games that he started in the small ball lineup, he has been doing his job. No complaints with DeAndre Bembry. I mean, he has been 
um, you know, the type of player the Raptors had hoped he was going to be and then some. And then Terrence Davis looks to have a new lit fire Looks more comfortable out there. He had a big game on Friday against the Timberwolves. I said it at the start of the season. I'll say it again. Terrence Davis has an opportunity to be the most deadly offensive player for the Raptors from off the bench. So hopefully Terrence Davis can continue getting in a groove and he does get consistent minutes and we could see more TD Bank coming into the game from off the bench and making a big impact. He can hit that three when give it to him. So guys, you look at the Raptors right now i mean they are four games out of first place which is mind-blowing in the east but also they're two games back of falling out of the play-in tournament so that tells you that this has been a strange season and that the east is completely wide open um and then you look at the raptors next couple of games here they got uh they got six games before the all-star break so they got a rematch against philly tomorrow night they got miami and then they got a three-game homestand against the Hornets, chicago detroit so the Raptors could realistically go 4-2 and two over the next six games, which would give them a very, very respectable record of 20-17 and 17 at the break. You would have taken the Raptors finishing 20-17 and 17 at the break, considering they started 2-8. and eight. So it looks like after a tough start to the season, the Raptors have finally figured out their identity. They're going to continue running with small ball, and I know I have my doubts. I said it in the show on Saturday, but... If Aaron Baines continues to play with consistency from off the bench and guys like Ananobi, Siakam, and uh, and Fred Van Vliet continue to level up defensively, maybe this can work after all. We shall see. It's very interesting to note, though, and I did want to bring this up because it's so funny how this has been a story that's been talked about a day after the Raptors beat the 76ers, which now means that the Raptors are undefeated with Kyle Lowry out of the lineup. So this morning, the Ringers' Kevin O'Connor published a story about teams vying for the top spot in the Eastern Conference, and he shared this noteworthy nugget about the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm going to go ahead and read what Kevin O'Connor said. The Sixers, meanwhile, can make a big acquisition of their own. League sources say Philadelphia, which came up short in its bid for Harden, is still seeking major moves to increase its championship odds. The trade market still needs to take shape in the coming weeks, so realistic targets are unclear. But one name to monitor is Raptors point guard Kyle Lowry, a 34-year-old Philadelphia native, in the final season of his contract. A veteran perimeter shot creator is the only piece the Sixers truly lack, and there aren't many other players on Lowry's level who are even theoretically available. And then Woes also said today on NBA Countdown that Daryl Morey has been active. He's always looking for a big blockbuster deal. Two areas the Sixers would like to improve, getting a four or five man who can shoot the ball along with two-way players. So, very interesting. And you know the noise in the room is going to get louder as the Raptors continue to look great with old Kyle Lowry. I will say this, Kyle Lowry on the 76ers, I think, would be an ideal fit. Personally speaking, would I want the Raptors to give up Kyle Lowry to the Sixers? Hell no. The Raptors are going to end up trading Kyle Lowry. You do not want to trade Kyle Lowry to your bitter rival and trade him in the division where there's a good possibility you might see Kyle Lowry in the playoffs. That would be super awkward. The Raptors going up against the Sixers in the playoffs, and they got to go up against Kyle Lowry. I don't know what type of trade package the Raptors will get in return. I haven't gotten that far of exploring this rumor, but uh, it's interesting that this has come out a day after the Sixers lost to the Raptors, a team that they should have beaten because this was a huge L for Philadelphia. The Sixers are trying to establish themselves as a legitimate contender this season. They played the Raptors. They did not look good. They had two opportunities to knock the Raptors out, and they allowed the Raptors to come back in the game as the Raptors went on to win the game. So Philadelphia, it's a big game for them tomorrow night. They got to win that game. That's a must win for Philly because if they allow the Raptors to sweep them in this mini two-game set, I think Daryl Moore is going to get on the phone the next day and say, okay, we got to make a move. What do you guys want for Kyle Lowry? So we will see what happens, guys. But uh, everything is looking uh, up in Raptors land and uh, with how wide open the Eastern Conference is with the Raptors starting to play now how they were last season things could get interesting the Raptors in this month alone have beaten the Nets the Bucks twice the 76ers once and it could be twice if the Raptors beat them again tomorrow night and by the way I will have the call for that game I'll be doing a live reaction and play-by-play join me for that one it's gonna be a lot of fun that's it for today's show guys let me know your thoughts to all the uh, recent events 
in Raptors land. And of course, this rumor that's coming out that Philly could be interested potentially in Kyle Lowry. Let me know. Hit me up in the comment section down below. Drop a like on this video. Sub to the channel. Ring the bell. Leave your comments as always. Follow me on social media where we can keep the conversation rolling. And that is it, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you all again in the next one. Till next time, be great and stay blessed. Peace.